Stranger Things Season 4. You guys didn't think I would do it, did you? I'm all caught up, though, so let's just go ahead and talk about it. In case you guys aren't caught up with anything Stranger Things up to Season 4, the latest season on Netflix, this is going to contain some spoilers. You've been fairly warned. And this is going to follow the similar structure as my previous Stranger Things reviews, which if you haven't checked out by this point... I mean, come on. So I'm going to go through the stuff that I liked about the season, going through each plot line, the stuff I didn't really like, stuff I didn't really care for, and then offer up some stuff that I think were missed opportunities along the way. Because I'll be honest, guys, season four was really damn good. I really, really appreciated that they delved more into the horror aspect of the show. Because in terms of, like, presentation, this is probably the scariest season out of the four. Not probably, it is the scariest season out of the four. So one plot line sees Mike Wheeler, once again played by Finn Wolfhard, visiting Elle, Will, and Jonathan at their new home in California. Hey, I like that state. All due to the traumatic event in Hawkins and the imminent danger to her friends, Elle goes with Dr. Sam Owens to a secret facility in Nevada to regain her powers. That's right, Eleven is a superhero. I mean, that's kind of a red flag in a nutshell, right? Why does everything have to be a superhero thing? She's reunited with Dr. Martin Brenner slash Papa, and she's forced to confront her time in Hawkins National Lab. The stuff with Millie Bobby Brown in this season I thought was utterly captivating and magnificent. She continues to be the shining light over everybody else. All due respect to all these other actors, but she carries this show on her shoulders, basically. And I'm sure she's going to go on to have a great career in her own right, but in hindsight... Millie Bobby Brown is going to be 11 for life. And the stuff that she gets to do in season four is really compelling television. I was glued to the screen. So with the military searching for 11, Mike, for God's sakes, going after his girlfriend, alongside Will and Jonathan, alongside Jonathan's friend Argyle, try to track her down first. Argyle works at a place called Surfer Boy Pizza, and my God, is he the definition of a surfer boy. Ever since he moved to California, Jonathan's kind of fallen under Argyle's spell as well, if you know what I mean. And that's a really interesting take on Jonathan, who is very much the reserved, quiet photographer who we met in season one. And now here he is, completely stoned out of his mind. Alongside Argyle, who is just... <laughs> He's, he was really funny. I enjoyed his character a lot more than I thought I was going to. I thought he was just going to be completely gratingly annoying, completely nauseating to watch. But you know what? He wasn't. Had a few endearing moments along the way, too. I, like, I can't believe I'm saying Argyle was endearing. And I thought Noah Schnapp was really good in this season as well. He's really, he's like, he's an actor as well. Like, the, of the grown-up actors, he's someone, I feel like, who's really coming into his own as a performer. Absolutely magnificent stuff. Another plot line follows Will and Jonathan's mother, Joyce, played again by the magnificent Winona Ryder, accompanying Murray as they venture to Russia upon learning that Jim Hopper is still alive. Hopper, who is still alive, is held in a Soviet prison camp in Kamchatka, where he and the other inmates are forced to battle a demo Gorgon that the Russians have captured and they're about to sick onto all the prisoners. David Harbour is awesome in this season once again as Hopper. He's been put through the ringer, but guys... I told you so. I knew that Hopper wasn't going to be killed right there. Because you know what? David Harbour is too big of a star. Hopper is too popular to let go for this show. And they didn't. Which also is another thing that kind of works against this season in a way. Which I'll dig into with this final plot line. Let's go back to Hawkins, where a series of mysterious teenage murders begin haunting the town. This is where we meet the leader of the D&D &D club at Hawkins High School, Eddie Munson. Who is just so freaking entertaining, so larger than life. Again, I thought Eddie was going to be really freaking annoying this whole season. But once they eventually, spoiler alert kill him off at the end of the season in a very emotional scene involving Gaten Matarazzo as Dustin. He really, like, his scenes tugged at my heartstrings, man. And I didn't think he would. He was really, really, really great. But Eddie's the prime suspect in the murders after senior cheerleading captain Chrissy Cunningham dies in his trailer. And Eddie's response is the stuff of meme legend. Chrissy, wake up! I don't like this! So our remaining heroes, Dustin, Lucas, Erica, Max, Steve, Nancy, and Robin, begin investigating to clear Eddie's name. All these returning actors are magnificent in this season as well we do get a tease of a return to the romance between steve and nancy who honestly i hated seeing nancy with steve in season one because i just thought steve was the biggest asshole walk in the face of the earth but steve has very much softened into the big brother of the group he is looking after his bestie robin in 
the greatest way. Absolutely love what they did with Steve. Love how they redeemed him. I could argue that Steve is my favorite character out of everybody. That's what this show does to me, man. I want Steve to get back together with Nancy now. Yes, we're just gonna have to wait until season five with this love triangle, huh? But of the rest of that group of friends, there's some interesting stuff going on. You have Lucas fitting in with the jocks and winning a game for his basketball team. Caleb McLaughlin, once again, is knocking it out of the park. I can't wait to see what's next for him. But I think if you're not Millie Bobby Brown, the show stealer this season is Sadie Sink as Max. What a freaking performance this was. Especially in the fourth chapter, Dear Billy. Her eulogy that she gives to her brother is so beautiful. It's so well shot, so well directed. The performance is stellar. That all leads to her getting caught in the upside down and near death a, a few times in this season. My goodness. Because it turns out that Eddie was not behind all those mysterious murders throughout Hawkins. That would be the result of Vecna. Now, Vecna, if Eleven is Harry Potter, Vecna is pretty much equal to Voldemort. But I'm loving the backstory that they gave to Vecna, who's played by the oh-so-intimidating Jamie Campbell Bower. Because when you first meet Jamie Campbell Bower in human form, he just comes off so stoic and so unsettling as this orderly in the lab where Eleven is brought up. But then once it's revealed that this orderly is actually number one, possessing probably even more powerful stuff than Eleven if you really think about it. Everything just adds up and it makes all the more sense. And the reveal of him as Vecna, I think, was done so well. Yeah, sure, it does feel very exposition dumpy. And that's just me nitpicking on my part. It just feels almost like they're over-explaining Vecna's origin a little bit too much there. But my goodness, I mean, my girlfriend, who I was watching the series with, actually recorded my reaction to the Vecna reveal. And I was so entranced by it. I might have to show that off on a future live stream. I don't know. Thank you, Lindsay. Obviously, this season is going to retain all the brilliant production elements. This universe and this series that the Duffer Brothers have created for us, it's just such great escapism. Really makes you feel nostalgic for the 80s with the soundtrack choices that they have. The aesthetic of the season, the costume design as well. It all looks so 1980s and vintage. But my big issue with the season actually does involve something that occurs in the finale. It of course involves the character of Max down in the Upside Down being tortured by Vecna. She is pretty much dead. She's flatlined. But then it's revealed that she's actually in a comatose state revived by Eleven, and I'm just like, I get it. I get why they want to bring Max back because Sadie Sink is such a star. Max is a great character now. But I feel like Max's whole arc from her getting introduced in Season 2 up to now, I think that whole arc has been completed. And I don't really know where else you could go with this character, if I'm being quite honest. So again, it's almost like the writers make a really bold choice about a character where, okay, I'd be really satisfied if this was it right here. As emotional as it is, and as tear-jerking as it is to see her go that way, if that was the end, I would have been like, good job, TV writers. Well done. It's a good story. But now she's coming back in season five, and I'm like, I, I don't know what else you really do with this character. But all in all, can't freaking wait to see where they go in season five once that's released. Like, inject it into my veins immediately. Actors are all great. Production design and the direction is still all freaking awesome. It's the most horrific season of the bunch. Do I think it's better than season three? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I may have to go back through and rewatch both of them to know for sure. But man, did I get a kick out of season four, guys. And if you haven't started watching Stranger Things, if you got to this point, sorry for spoiling you, but I warned you. I warned you that I would spoil you. But joking aside, if you haven't started watching this show, what the heck are you waiting for? I'm gonna give season four an A. Netflix got itself a good one, didn't they? But guys, that's gonna about wrap it up for the Stranger Things playlist until season five is available for us to watch. Let me know what you thought of Stranger Things season four down in the comments section below. Who's your favorite character? What's been your favorite episode? What's your favorite season up to this point? Lots of stuff we can discuss, guys. I have a ton of fun doing it. Getting to interact with you guys makes this all the more rewarding and fun for me. Go ahead and tap that subscribe button if you're new. Click that like button as well. Only helps continue to grow this awesome community out here. And stay tuned for more videos very soon, guys. Y'all are the best. With all that being said, back talk commence.